Namaskar. Welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. After about a month's uh, absence, we have with us Pandit Satish Kumar Sharma ji again from United Kingdom. Pandit ji, namaskar and welcome to P Guru's channel. Ram ji, namaskar. Jai Shri Ram. How are you? I'm doing well, sir, and I hope things are going well with you and your family. We're all well. We're um, blessed with good health and uh, safety and uh, a bit more security than many people at this time. So we're very grateful. Um, no, it's as best as could be expected under current circumstances. Yes, that's absolutely right. I couldn't agree with you more there. So today we'll take a quick look at the recently concluded elections and uh, some dirty linen being, you know, washed in public. But what is also shocking to me when I read some of the reports is the visceral hatred that is being spread by the Labour Party towards Modi, which is very unfortunate. We are having an elections in the United Kingdom. Why is some other country's leader name being dragged through the mud here? Can you please uh, help us understand a little bit more on why Labour is taking such a nasty attitude? Well, it's uh, taken us all by surprise, to be perfectly honest. Uh, I suppose we should have expected it. It's not as though um, the build-up was hidden. Um, there have been so many small events which have happened over the last two, three years, um, most of which have been creating an environment in which hatred for Hindus could almost become normalized um, from mild criticisms through to quite aggressive uh, um, verbal and uh, online abuse. Your uh, watches will, may maybe they will recall when the last election was happening, there were cars driving around in Leicester with great big posters on the side talking about Hindu killing fields. Um, and the implication being that this was a, a large um, reality when there was nothing like that at all. And then we saw at the Labour Party conference, the completely unevident, unevidenced and unsupported allegations about um, uh, genocide being inflicted in Kashmir and, uh, and so on. 10,000 women were being abused and raped, all, all these allegations completely unevidenced. And then we saw the resolution passed that um, the Labour would, in essence, uh, interfere in the, the whole India-Kashmir issue. Well, it's progressed since then. In fact, the election that you referred to is still un underway. It hasn't finished yet. It's uh, closing later on today. And for the first time, we have now seen um, openly hatred become part of official Labour Party campaign literature. Um, if, uh, if I can, let me give you a, a quick example of what sure. form this has taken. Sure. So bear in mind that when a candidate is standing for election, all of the documentation, all of the campaign brochures, posters, they all have to meet with approval from the um, chairperson of that particular um, constituency. Let me show you what uh, appeared the other day. So this was being handed out. Don't risk a Tory MP who is not on your side. And then on the right hand side, there is a picture of Prime Minister Modi and Boris Johnson shaking hands. So this is a, a direct insinuation that because Boris Johnson is associated with the leader of the largest democracy in the world, and has good cordial relationships with him, which really is the function of a prime minister, is to establish very cordial relationships with fellow democracies in our case, with uh, trading partners, um, etc. And that good relationship, which is good for the nation, all of a sudden is being presented as though it's against the interests of the British public voting in a tiny little almost Hamlet <laughs> called Batley and Spen in the backwater. But it's symptomatic of um, the manner in which the, the, the trend has, has been leading us. Um, I'm fairly confident that, um, I think Keir Starmer has appointed a new campaign manager and it's a, a lady of Pakistani Muslim origin, um, if my uh, uh, memory serves me correctly. And so this is the first election which has been sort of rolled out under her watch. And this is the, the sort of uh, narrative that we're now beginning to see. 
just think about how unreal the situation is. You have a tiny constituency in the depths of rural Great Britain. Rural Great Britain is struggling under the COVID lockdowns. The local economies are having a great deal of difficulty. Labour councils throughout the country have been plagued by allegations and many, many cases and instances of grooming of vulnerable adults. We've had so many inquiries which have so far not borne fruit. In fact, only last week I saw a report from um, one of the uh, retired um, senior police officers who was passionately engaged in trying to bring to justice the perpetrators of the grooming gangs. And she raised the point that in fact, it, if anything, it's worse than it has ever been. So there are very, very serious issues um, which the British public are very concerned about. And yet the campaign for a new um, representative in this particular party is being run on the basis of Prime Minister Johnson's relationship with Prime Minister Modi. This is a huge red flag. Um, Pandiji, I have a question. In this particular constituency, what percentage of minorities such as people of Muslim origin reside? Um, as far as I know, it's uh, less than 30%. Um, but there is a very, shall we say, committed um, Mirpuri um, Pakistani origin community who are very passionate and committed to their cause. So the presence of a, a potent minority, whether beneficent or whether toxic, is often all that's needed to sway the political dialogue and, and rhetoric. But it really is about time that the British Labour Party understood that there are consequences for these actions. This is another blow. You will recall how the Hindu community was deeply, deeply disturbed when in Leicester, we had um, Claudia Webb just parachuted in because she was probably because she was a personal friend and a close associate of um, Jeremy Corbyn. You know, she was an Islington person and then suddenly she pops up as a, um, a Leicester person without any democratic process have been, having been agreed to. The Hindu community there was very, very unhappy with that. Um, just before the election, six councillors for the first time in history came out saying that the Labour Party had become toxic for Hindus. There was a long-standing Labour councillor, Sandeep Magani, who came out with a scathing attack, and he's a legal officer, a scathing attack of the manner in which the Labour Party is infested with anti-Hindu, anti-India sentiment. And so this is now another confirmation. It'll be interesting to see. We have the Labour Party conference is due just after summer in a couple of months' time. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if the groups who got together to put the anti-India Kashmir resolution onto the um, party's uh, list of approved resolutions, if they don't get together and press for it to become Labour Party policy. And that will be, I think, a, uh, a pivotal moment in Labour's relationship. It's already having a terrible, terrible time in terms of uh, <clears throat> in terms of the British Hindu community, and I think that will probably be the nail in the coffin of the the relationship. You know, uh, one of the things that uh, these voters need to realize is that their country, their country of birth, probably a country of origin, is really, really on the edge of completely coming apart. What news is coming from? Uh, Pakistan is frankly disturbing. Their so-called Muslim ally countries no longer want to talk to them. In fact, many of them are expelling the nationals of Pakistan back from their countries. Also, I also hear that China has written off the $6 billion loan that Pakistan owes to them. And, and in fact, they have stopped completely working on the CPEC project now. So everywhere things are in a, you know, in a state of disarray. And these people also should know that the people who run the country, about 200,000 people, uh, families, uh, maybe you know, uh, 1 million people, or, or some in, in that ballpark, many of them have dual citizenship cards. At the slightest sign of trouble, they're going to leave all the other people 
to their own on their own and and depart for safer countries safer havens so this is the state of affairs in their country their their beloved original country and they need to in, in fact start thinking what would happen to them in uk and usa in canada if the original the, the country of that they came from completely comes apart it's going to be a huge problem whatever the um uh, the voice they think they have will completely go away because the the, the means by which i mean there, there's a credibility problem you keep saying something which is a lie and then <laughs> the foundation on which these lies were built is going to collapse so i'm i'm just waiting to see when that's going to happen people keep telling me that the army of pakistan you know one of those few places where the army has a country that is pakistan for you is going to still keep it together i don't know how long when the generals themselves are always having one foot outside this is the reality i know a lot of you will hate me for saying all these things but that is the reality so pandit ji there is again a messaging in concert i want to just tell you yesterday um, ilhan omar congresswoman ilhan omar was saying that she has no regrets for equating united states and israel as being as bad or as good as the terrorists from the palestinian side so hamas so th this is the kind of thing so something like you know i can't lift my people up i'm going to drag you down to the mud so uh, th this is not going to go i don't know when the united states congress is going to act on her but i think that that moment is coming very very soon and and i'm just you know flabbergasted to note that these kinds of sentiments prevail when you get elected to represent a constituency you are representing everyone in that constituency and and also satish ji i want to tell all those muslim brothers and sisters who watch these programs across the world think and reflect what is going on why do you want to vote as a herd what have these people done for you forget about the fact that yes i identify with this cause and labor identifies with it therefore i shall vote for them what have they actually what done for you at a constituency level there are a lot of things that they can do because they get funding you want to look at that before you decide yes this person has done good for us perhaps this person deserves a chance this is just my two cents uh, satish ji because the next topic that i'm going to segue into is very much concerning a similar problem that has been plaguing england and united kingdom for now tens of years the grooming gangs we know that a few few weeks or few episodes ago we were talking about the tabling of the report and the inconsistencies that were found and that they were being reviewed where do things stand now sir mm. well the tragedy is that i have nothing further to report on that no progress has been made and in fact um the momentum of uh, that report seems to have been lost by a subsequent report which was issued by the government the report which said there was no institutional racism and discrimination in the british establishment and that's uh, a report which has been very very um uh, highly criticized in in most places in fact i'm going to do a particular project specifically to disprove that report um that's the sort of problem that we have in the in the days gone past in britain's heyday it was possible to issue a report or make a statement or have a pr campaign and people would then pretty much buy it and and go along but that's not the world we're in today we're in a a world we're in a britain which is struggling to cope with the changes post brexit it's struggling to cope with the economic consequences of covid and all of a sudden we're getting um what seem to be announcements from the government which are no more than trying to paper over the cracks uh, you mentioned pakistan as a failed state um britain is one of the largest contributors one of the largest um, recipients of um foreign aid from britain is actually pakistan and for a long time it's been a complaint in the um, the british uh, political circles that that money doesn't go to the people it um goes to support the regime and uh, the regime's uh, um goals and objectives but there in in britain we now have got many of these towns which are approaching um great depression levels of uh, unemployment and fear and worry 
and the stresses and fault lines are beginning to appear. When you've got that sort of a, a, global, a national environment, what you need to do is to understand that you can't afford to be the virtue signaling platform for anybody who wants to leverage the victim card. And really, Labour does need to look at its, its own constituents. I, I'm, I'm actually quite concerned from an academic and historical point of view. If you look at the factors which precede the collapse of a state, we have got those factors popping up one by one. Britain is approaching failed state um, waters, and that's, that's a great concern. And at times like that, you really don't want to be a poster boy in a, a main election, a very important election. You don't want to be um, broadcasting your anti-Modi um, uh, programs. The, the voting public's not interested. And it's a tragedy. Labour should have learned when it lost all of those constituencies which used to be called the Red Wall. The voting public had lost faith and confidence in Labour in its capacity to represent them, the white working class, the majority. And so rather than targeting the white working class in Batley, where this election is being conducted, they chose to plaster Modi's picture everywhere. And it's just, uh, it beggars belief, the level of detachedness and the level of distance, the, the lack of connectivity that um, these parliamentarians are having with the grassroots general public. It, no good will come of it, I'm afraid. And uh, before we log off, I just wanted to uh, put one thought in uh, the mind of the Conservative Party. And this is, as always, unasked for advice. I'm very good at giving unasked for advice. And uh, you, if you look at some of the results, whether it is the Bharti Janta Party or the BJP in India or in, uh, in other countries, uh, in the recently concluded state elections, I'm taking two different states, Tamil Nadu and uh, West Bengal. Uh, let's take a quick look at just Tamil Nadu. In Tamil Nadu, there was an IPS officer who was called the Singam, which is the lion of Mengaluru. And he came, he gave up his job, he entered politics, he wanted to serve the people, and he ran from his constituency. He's an extremely popular person, well-read in Islam, Hadith, everything. I mean, he was so good that he, in fact, uh, the the local the, so the constituency that he was uh, you know fighting from had a sizable Muslim population and first thing they did was the elders so-called elders of the the constituency tried to ban him from coming and uh, you know canvassing for votes in some areas and and that had to be uh, you know taken head on and 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 after that when we started looking at the results one of the booths where the 99.999% the of the voters are Muslim, the results were out of a total of 767 votes cast, only seven votes went to him, 760 went to DMK, the opposition candidate. So this kind of a herd mentality is not good. And, and, and believe me when I say this thing, if this IPS officer had represented you much better progress would have come your way than the DMK, which only knows how to be corrupt. In fact, in the first 100 days, they have established so many new things where I think they are just trying to build their coffers in the hope that their dear chief minister will become a prime ministerial candidate because he's the least offensive in terms of a kitchidi that might get formed in case the BJP doesn't muster the numbers. Pandiji, in, in summary, if you want to just wrap up what we are seeing in Great Britain today, uh, mm. please feel free to do so. And then we can call it a wrap. Viewers, yep. please excuse us for a bit of a scratchy sound that came in the middle of the war in the recording. But I think the message is coming through loud and clear. Pandiji, over to you. Yeah, it's a, a tragedy that um, politics seems to be filled with people who are incompetent. It would be wonderful, even if they're nice people, it would be wonderful if they're at least competent. And the tragedy is that we have people who are both uninformed, they're not knowledgeable, and they're not competent. Um, the Labour Party we've just spoken about, uh, there is a saying that the Tories always descend into sleaze and corruption, and that the Labour Party always descends into infighting and um, incompetence. Now, we have an incumbent government at the moment, which, strictly speaking, should be under so much pressure. We've recently had the health secretary only the day before yesterday 
um, being asked to resign in a scandal, sleaze and corruption. This is classic Tory sort of slippage. And yet Labour not able to, to capitalise upon it. There is, I think there have been few times when the country need a strong opposition. You know, the way the democracy works is the tension between the two polar opposites. And so we end up in the middle ground most of the time. But when you have got no opposition of any worth and value, that's one of the precursors of a failed state. The, the dominant party, uh, Boris Johnson and his team and his party are not being held to account at all. It's a, a very, very concerning issue. The deputy Labour Party uh, leader, Angela Rayner, she was the education secretary uh, shadow education secretary for the Labour Party. She has no um, primary, um, no no O levels and no A levels to to speak of. She was thinking of introducing um, a policy to erase and get rid of university degree qualifications in many cases. So all sorts of uh, nonsensical um, uh, proposals. So she she's not very educated. She's not very competent lovely person but we don't need lovely people in these roles we need really competent people who can do the job at hand only yesterday she was criticizing the new health secretary and she was calling him Sadiq Javid in many interviews that she had she called him Sadiq Javid now we have Sadiq Khan who's the mayor of London and then we have um, our uh, Javid Ji who is the new health secretary and she is the shadow deputy, you know, she's the leader of the opposition party. She should know that Sadiq Khan is the mayor. And, um, you know, we used to joke that uh, for white people, we all, look to, we all look exactly the same. And in this case, both of them are Pakistani origin and both of them had parents, fathers who were bus drivers. But for heaven's sake, you know, they're very prominent figures. How on earth could you produce a mishmash of their names and, uh, and not, not correct it? It's basic reading, isn't it? And that's all that's that's necessary. So, um, you know, we're seeing that uh, Sajid Javid, he also tweeted earlier today um, a sarcastic remark, <laughs> reminding her that uh, although they were from similar origins, they're actually two different people. That's the level of incompetence that the opposition have at this moment in time. So it's, uh, um, you know, all of the, uh, the ingredients for a, a collapse in uh, confidence in the state and the machinery of state is present in this country. And that's a worrying, worrying thought. So let's see where it goes. Um, we're all in for the ride globally. And uh, I think Britain is entering even, uh, even stormier waters. So on that note, um, I will conclude what we have to say. But uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to the people's audience. And uh, I look forward to uh, some more updates, uh, hopefully within the next two weeks this time. Absolutely, Panditji. It's a pleasure having you. Namaskar. And we'll be back again, viewers, Pandit. with more. Namaskar more happenings in the United Kingdom. Thank you very much, sir. Boom.